to be here today. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful day here in North Dakota. Those of you who, my students that are watching, you you know, this is one gorgeous day. No wind, a beautiful sun, perfect, perfect spring day. Um, and I am going to read today a book that is set in the winter turning to spring. And we kind of, uh, you know, have that happen where winter sometimes lasts a little bit too long. And um, this is by Miss Jan Brett that I love and adore. My birthday was last Friday. And for my birthday, uh, my real kids, they're all grown up and gone. They know how much I love Jan Brett and they know how much I love reading. And they replaced some of my Jan Brett books for me with some nice hardback books. And I'm going to read one of those. I actually have um, Jan Brett's signature in one of these from 20 something years ago when, when um, she signed it. And then this one helps to replace that. And this is a written and illustrated by Jan Brett and it's called Annie and the Wild Animals. Now, I've told you Jan Brett is like amazing for um, being able to predict things. And a lot of times she has like a story within a story. So I'll kind of try and show you because this is a perfect book for seeing what's going to happen by looking around the edges of the pages. So you see if you can tell the story within a story by what's happening and going on around the outside. Okay, so it had been snowing for days. Winter was lasting too long. And something was wrong with Annie's cat. Hmm. Taffy had stopped playing. She ate more than usual and she slept all day long as she curled up in strange places. And you can see like all, look around the outside, all the strange places she's finding her. <laughs> also, this was really cool. Look, it looks like carved wood. So you can see in the picture, remember the little story within a story? So you can see things that are happening in pictures that aren't carved wood, but look like carved wood. Isn't that cool? One morning, Annie could not find Taffy anywhere. She looked and she looked, but Taffy was gone. And Annie was lonely. I need a new friend, she thought. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Oh, hmm. Can we still see Taffy? Oh, ta mm, let's see. Annie placed a corn cake at the edge of the woods. She imagines a small furry little animal coming out of the woods and becoming her pet. Oh, let's make a prediction. Do you think that Annie's going to find a little furry animal. Hmm. In the morning, the corn cake was gone. In its place stood a giant moose. Oh, he's too big for a pet, she thought. I'll have to try again. And that night, Annie left another corn cake at the edge of the woods. Oh, let's see. Hmm, is it gonna be a cute, fuzzy little animal? Let's see. Oh, hmm. The next morning, the moose was back and a snarling wildcat was there too. Oh, He's too wild to tame, Annie thought. Oh. Annie put more corn cakes at the edge of the woods. Hmm. Predicting. Who's going to come next? Hmm, I'm sure it's going to be a little bunny, right? What? The next morning, a big growling bear was there with the moose and the wildcat. 
Hmm, do we see anything going on around the outside? Oh, I don't know. Oh man, he is just too grumpy, Annie thought. <gasps> Annie made as many corn cakes as she could, and she left them by the edge of the woods. At dawn, Annie heard the snarls and growls of the wild animals. There was the moose and the wildcat and the bear. A stag, a large gray wolf, and a black bear had all joined them. Oh, great. Oh, none of these is soft and friendly like Taffy, Annie thought. All the next day, Annie made corn cakes and she left them at the edge of the woods. And all night long, she heard the sounds of the wild animals eating the corn cakes. Annie awoke to find a large nose sticking into her through her window. It belonged to the moose and he was still hungry. There were more animals everywhere. They roared for their next meal and the little house shook. Oh man. But the, the animals, they wanted more corn cakes. But when Annie looked into the barrel of cornmeal, it was empty. She couldn't make any more corn cakes. Annie was sad. She would never find a pet now. Oh, she missed Taffy so much. All night, a warm breeze blew from the south. The snow melted. Plants pushed their way through the soil and trees sprouted buds. The woods were coming alive again. The wild animals went back to the woods. They would have food there now. And now the spring had finally come. Then, as unexpectedly as the warm spring breeze, Taffy walked proudly toward Annie. Oh, Taffy, Annie exclaimed. Oh, you've come home. Where have you been? Taffy looked back the way she had come. And out of the woods came three soft and friendly kittens. Annie would not be lonely anymore. The end. So how carefully did you look? Did you know that there were kittens? Because uh, sneaky little Jambrette, man, she had it going all the way through. I'll just turn to this page. So remember I said you could make a prediction. It was like, oh yeah, the stag's going to come next. Oh, look inside the tree. Oh, there's Taffy. Do you see, she had that story within a story going the whole time too. Here's where she brought all the corn cakes to the edge and the moose was sticking through. Oh, look what's going on right there. So if you were looking carefully, you would see what was going on the story within a story. And the story within the story was that Taffy was off having kittens and took care of them and then brought them home to be with Annie. Now little tidbit before I go today is remember I told you you can write stories about anything you can get your ideas from anywhere and I told you another time when I wrote a jam Brett where she'd gotten um, her idea for Fritz and the beautiful horses well for Annie and the wild animals where she got her idea for that one was from her own daughter and it was a year when her daughter for her birthday she wanted to have, oh, I try, it's a, it was a dolphin and a cheetah, uh, or either one. You know, I want a dolphin or a cheetah. Hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. So 
interesting how you're going to keep a dolphin. But anyway, <laughs> her daughter wanted a dolphin or a cheetah. But, you know, she couldn't have that. And she said, but fortunately, a stray cat came around. And this little stray cat, um, they, na they named it Pity. And she showed up and then, she, and then the, the stray cat ended up having um, kittens. And so that is how Annie and the Wild Animals was born was from something that was happening in her, their, her own life and she ended up making a make-believe story out of it. Um, a realistic fiction is what we call that kind where it's something that could happen but didn't really happen but she took something from her own life and created a whole story out of it. So you can write about anything. Um, so I love reading. I love reading. It opens up so many worlds. So I hope you enjoyed Annie and the Wild Animals today and that you have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.